an individual lesson has seven parts to it. They all follow this model. The lesson starts when the student arrives at the cell. And whatever, whatever you establish with them, how are you doing? How's your job going? How's your wife and kids? How's your dog? Whatever it is, right, that acknowledges them, acknowledges their uniqueness, you know, confirms your interest in them as a person, uh, makes them feel at home, makes them feel like, yeah, th this cat knows me. This is a good place for me to be, you know, makes them feel welcome. All that stuff. That's that's before anything else, right? Let that let that happen. And here's where I use ritual as part of the groove, part of the mantra, part of the way to bring you into the mindset you need to have to have a good lesson. And it's it's very simple, you know. We 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 stand at a certain distance, and you. You draw your sword and we salute each other, but we do it in a very particular way. And we always do it that way, every time. Lessons. We do some exercise that you know very well and that you do very well. And again, that's going to vary from individual to individual. You know, for some people, it's, many people, most people probably, it's just a straight thrust. The simplest thing in the world that you can ever do with a sword, a straight thrust, boom. Just that. Just that. Grease that groove. Get your spirit ready. Get in the flow of what it means to be connected to that sword. Okay. That is determined by a Socratic uh, progression of, you know, asking questions with the sword. Right? And what I mean by that is, I give a certain cue with the sword. That's the question. And if the student responds appropriately to that cue, that's the answer. Right? So the question is, can you do this? And the answer is, yeah, I can do that. Oh, okay. Can you do this? And the answer is, yeah, I can do that. And I say, oh, can you do this? And they say, Ugh, nope, I can't do that. Boom. That's what we're going to work on. So you, you work your way through stuff. Until you get to a place where you ask the question and the answer from the student is, no, I, I can't do that. And, and that's not going to be the same thing every day, every time, you know, because you can't step in the same river twice, man. Every time your student comes for a lesson, they're a different person. They've got stuff going on in their life. They, one day they may have a great lesson. Next week they come back and they have a shitty lesson because stuff is going on. So this is all in the moment, today. What do we need to work on today? Not what did we work on last week, not what should we be working on to progress according to this table of things I saw in a book, right? But what do you need to work on today for you, for your skill, for your goal, for your spirit, for your life to enhance you? What's going to do that for you today, today? And I want to get you to a point where whatever it is we're working on, you do it pretty damn good. Maybe not perfect. But there's been big improvement from the introduction of that element until now. And here's the trick. You need to know when your student's skills uh, or performance starts to deteriorate and stop just before that happens. <laughs> All right? So you have, to, you have to be on your game. You have to be observant. You have to focus on your student just as much as you would focus on an opponent in a fight. Only instead of for your benefit, it's for their benefit, right? So here's where the little tells in. Are they starting to sweat? When, when, when they're burned out, do they have certain facial expressions? Do they start to fidget? Do they, does their stance change? Does their balance change? What are the things that tell you this is as far as we should go today? You've got to know that about your student. Uh, the cool down is a lot like the warm up. You select for the cool down, once again, something that they do well, something they know well, something they're 
perfectly comfortable with, you know, something they can blast through and really feel like, yeah, you know, pow, you know. Uh, a lot of times what I do is just simple thrust and lunge, just a thrust and lunge, you know. But I want power. I want them to knock me through the fucking wall with that lunge. I want them to explode their energy out and completely conquer their environment. When they're done with this lesson, I want them to step out into the world like they're a fucking lion. You know? That's the spirit I want to leave them with. Again, ritual. So we, we have our places. We salute each other in a particular way. We set our arms aside, shake hands, and we say, merci, thank you. The valediction may be two minutes or maybe two hours, <laughs> all right? Because here's where whatever the student's thoughts are, whatever the questions are, wherever they want to go, wh whatever ideas this triggers in them, maybe something you did in the lesson triggers an idea or maybe that applies to something else in their life, their job, their boss, their lover, whatever, their dog, their horse, who knows, right? What's cooking? What's the connection to their life that they're making from the lesson that they just had. So this discussion, God, could be anything. Could be, eh, there's no holds barred and I'll stay with a student. <laughs> I mean, essentially, I'll stay with a student as long as they want to talk. And I'll talk about whatever they need to talk about. I don't care what it is. You know, if this connects to, you know, politics, <laughs> history, love, sex, and death, you know, the whole scene, man, uh, I'll go wherever you need to go. And then, when that kind of comes down, then we're